we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over 30 plus motorcycle close calls. This is a very good compilation of close calls and I'm going to go over each and every one because this is very typical in a motorcycle rider's commute and everything. So let's go over this stuff and it's going to be a lot like my live streams where I talk about motorcycle accidents and motorcycle close calls but this is going to be a little bit different because it's going to be a straight video. So I just want to say thank you to my patrons and YouTube members and everybody that has been sharing and supporting this channel because this video itself more than likely is going to get copyright claimed or it's going to get demonetized because we're watching a lot of motorcycle accidents and who knows, maybe Storyful or Jukin Media has one of these clips and they're going to copyright claim the whole thing and they're going to take all ad revenue. So if you would like to support the channel, please uh, swing by and click that join button and uh, maybe uh, stop by Patreon and possibly help support the channel that way. So let's go over this. What we're going to do is we're going to actually go over each and every clip. There's 30 plus motorcycle close calls that you might encounter. And uh, so let's go ahead and jump into this and let's go to the first one and we're just going to do lightning round style of all these videos and we're going to talk about kind of what happened and therefore you can avoid these close calls or accidents yourself. Okay, so this is very typical on the road. You're going to have a car that's going to merge into your lane without doing a head check or doing or checking the mirrors or even using an indication. Now, this is something that you're going to want to take a look at when you're riding because you do not want to get this close and you do not want to rear end the vehicle. So what happens here, and this is going to happen to a lot of the other drivers in these videos, I can already tell, is that it's going to be inattentional blindness. It's different than unintentional blindness. Inattentional blindness is where your brain literally does not see what it is that you're looking at. <clears throat> what is you're looking at? Jeez, I got something in my throat. So what happened here was that this person could have looked for uh, for a motorcyclist or a car or anything like that, but they just could not recognize. Their brain would not recognize that. So a lot of the times when you come up to a situation like this, do not induce road rage. Do not uh, confront this person. Do not hit their mirror. Do not do that. Just kind of slow down, relax, switch to the next lane if you have to, roll off the throttle, and you can avoid the situation. Just like that, perfect. This situation right here, I'd move off to the left or move off to the right. That way I'm not being sandwiched by uh, the vehicle in front of me and behind me. A lot of uh, car, a lot of motor vehicle accidents that happen with police officers can, a lot of fatal accidents that happen with p police officers when they are stopped to uh, to write a ticket or to pull over somebody uh, it ha <clears throat> happens when the when the police officer is in between the vehicles and a vehicle hits that uh, police vehicle and then it really uh, it, it, it pinches that police officer there's actually on bumpers that says do not stand in between car and the police car and uh, it's, a, it's a good lesson to learn as a motorcyclist to not do that ourselves This happens a lot in uh, uh, mountain roadways and everything like that. If you notice that they're going to have, let's go back to this real quick. If you notice we have chevrons here, this means it's a sharp turn. We have two people not riding or not driving the way they should be driving. We have this guy up front out, uh, outside of his own lane into our lane. We also have this motorist way over here, which is the one that we recognize right off the bat, is that he's not in his lane himself. Uh, we also see that there's construction, so quite possibly construction pushed him out of his own lane. Uh, this is a good situation to where you look well enough ahead, at least 12 seconds ahead like the MSF recommends. And then right here, being in lane position 2. This actually happened to me on my raw DDFM uh, riding up a mountain part 2, where I was riding up the mountain and I had a truck actually do this, but it was a lot closer. But I was already in a position of, of relative safety by being in lane position 2 and possibly lane position 3, so you have a nice buffer. I choose lane position 2 a lot of the times because that gives me a buffer to the right and a buffer to the left just in case a car wants to come over or just in case there's a lot of debris. But once again, continue moving left, right, center, all these different places in your positions. You remember you got lane position 1, 2, and 3. We're a single lane uh, uh, vehicle with our motorcycle tires up in front and in the back. So we can use everything we possibly ha we can. So this guy did really well. He actually kind of moved over just a little bit and he avoided a collision. But this is common up in the mountains so be very careful. See how he's in lane position three right now? 
he actually did an evasive maneuver. He searched, he evaluated, and he executed a proper maneuver to get himself out of the way. So now it's a close call and it's not a crash. That's perfect. Okay, right here. If we go back just a little bit. Okay, we're on a dirt road. Now, what I like to think of as hills are blind turns themselves. You know, we got blind turn to the left, blind to the right. Those are horizontal plane blind turns. So if we're looking at a hill, it is a vertical blind turn because you cannot see over the hill. So in this situation, really give yourself that space cushion. Really move on over to the left. This is a dirt road, so the soft shoulder might not be the best bet. Looks like he's on an adventure bike, so he has knobbies. He has the expertise probably to handle the soft, soft dirt. I would do that. I would move on over to the whatever position it is for your country. You know, for the United States, it would probably be to the right. So this looks like he might be outside of the United States. So his version of being on the appropriate line is off to the left. So I'd be more so off to the left just in case there is a vehicle or any type of unexpected hazard is on the other side. So when we go ahead and watch this, he did a good job. Because typically, if you have this massive lane and you're riding on the dirt, you're going to want to use up all you can. You're going to probably be in the middle. And if he was in the middle, he would have been hit by this vehicle. This is a hazard that can happen around a blind turn to the left, right, or vertically. So you really got to watch out for that. You even see that he did an evasive maneuver. So let's go back just a little bit. Watch him move over to the left. Very good. Oh. Okay, this one, I don't know exactly what happened here. So this is a typical uh, residential neighborhood here. We have vehicles parked on the side. Typically, if it's a small street, actually fire code says that you cannot park on the side. There's a lot of homeowners associations that have small streets like this, and you're actually not supposed to park on the road because of the fire trucks needing to get to the emergency. If there's two trucks or if there's two vehicles right here, park side to side, um, uh, uh, emergency vehicles cannot make it through. So there's actually uh, codes and everything that, that don't allow a lot of these things, but maybe that's not what's happening here. But it also plays into the fact that you're gonna have a minimum or a minimal uh, uh, space to, to make it through. So this just happened to the point where they both went around this vehicle at the same time. So this guy's a little upset because he didn't have a lot of room. But remember, you can have a tiny amount of room to make your way through. In this situation, what I would have done is that I would have uh, let him go ahead. I would have slowed down, let him get around, and he's going to probably go back into his space, and then I'll just go. So a lot of these situations, you can actually roll off the throttle and uh, allow a space cushion to appear for you. Call him a moron, um, but you know, at the end of the day, this is just a typical thing. It can happen in a car. If, if he was in a car, somebody would have just slowed down to let the other person go. But the fact that he's on a motorcycle, car drivers think, well, he can make it. Motorcyclists like, well, I can make it, but everyone's going to get upset. So instead of everybody getting upset, go ahead and roll off that throttle. You're in control of your actions. You're not in control of the other car actions, and allow yourself to increase that space cushion. Whoa. Okay, so this right here, great indication of not having a lot of space at all. We have pedestrians right here. We have cars backed up right here. We have this car wanting to pull out. You can tell by this car wanting to pull out because it has its uh, reverse lights on and the tires are turned. So this means this person is going to back up um, and then go this way. Now, I don't know if this is a one-way road. It quite possibly could be a one-way road because you see how the cars are, are lined up this way. Cars are lined up this way. Um, but when we go up to this point, you already see that this car's tire is moving. So we're going to go back just a little bit. So right here, watch the tires. This is the clue and the subtle cues that I talk about in all my ride along with Dana the Fireman is that you see these magnesium wheels right here. So you have the spokes, you have five spokes and you see them rotate. If they're starting to rotate on you, that's the first thing that you're going to be able to see. That is the one thing that is really going to stand out compared to actually the vehicle moving in space. So take a look at that. We're going to go ahead and slow down the speed right now. You're going to see it rotate. It's rotating. So since it's rotating, you know that this vehicle is moving. We also have pedestrians blocking your view. So now the gap that you're typically going to try to make is not good anymore. We don't know if this car driver is going to pull out all the way, and we don't know what these pedestrians are doing. So at this point, right where he's at, I would have stopped. 
allow this vehicle to move, allow the pedestrians to get out of the way, and therefore you can just make a straight shot with no obstacles or no hazards. But the fact that he actually kept going and going and going, expecting the car to stop and expecting the pedestrians to stop, it doesn't happen. But yeah, if you've ever been in a parking lot and you see pedestrians coming out of Walmart or Kmart or whatever it is, a grocery store, and you're trying to make it through right in front of that grocery store, they are looking down because they know that they are pedestrians and they have the right of way. They're not going to acknowledge you. They do that. So always assume that that's what a pedestrian is going to do and you do not want to hit a pedestrian. It's a 150, 100, 200 pound person. It's going to make you drop. It's like hitting a deer. So you really got to watch out for that. And then also you have this vehicle. So this is two hazards that you really got to watch out for. And another hazard that a lot of people don't recognize is that these cars, we don't know who's in these cars. So always have a space cushion off to the left away from these cars. Since we have cars on both sides, I would be riding in the middle in this situation. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is way too close. You notice how she's not even looking at the motorcyclist? Yet saying whoa, 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 whoa does not indicate anything. We're way too close. There's nothing can happen. If this car decided to keep pushing back, you just got hit. Whoa. Okay, I'm assuming the close call in this one was when was when the car driver, let's go ahead and move whoa. back. This is the beauty of this is the beauty of filming all live, no edits whatsoever, other than adding on stuff to the screen. Um, but once again, I would love it if you guys would swing on by Patreon to see if you like it or not. It's two dollars a month, and it really helps out the channel because I have a feeling that this video is gonna be copyright claimed, or it's gonna be demonetized because we're watching accident or motorcycle compilation videos, even though this is a reaction video. So right here we have uh, this motorcycle is moving on over to the center lane because he's trying to avoid. The uh, bicyclist, but it's also a sharp turn, blind turn, and I talk about this in my live streams that you're going to have sun shining down, and the shades are actually going to mess up your line. So you have shade, sun, and then probably shade on the other side. It might mess up your vision and your line, so really watch out for that. So as soon as you pass a bicyclist like this, because remember you have to share the road, is that get back into your spot because we have cars that are coming around this blind turn, and we don't know how big the car is, we don't know if they're going to go wide, all these different things. So this right here seems like it's really close. It actually is very close. This car is actually doing really well. He has this small shoulder. This motorcyclist is basically the other, like the inside car tire right here, but on this lane, I would move on over. We're motorcyclists once again. We can use up very little space, and that's what I would be doing. And if you notice, on this car and the, and the car prior to it, they are using almost the whole shoulder so that they can give enough room. So sometimes you're going to have cars, just like the one that we talked about with the close call, not using, right here, we could see that right there, using the full shoulder. Um, the car before that did not. The car before that used a massive gap because it didn't want to get close to the side. So we're going to go back a little bit. This is the beauty of uh, YouTube playback. Oh, go back. Let's go back. There we go. See how big of a shoulder this has? Yeah, so you really got to watch out for cars that are going a little bit wide on that. That's probably where this close call video came from. <laughs> Relatively two close calls within about a minute. Okay, so what happened here was we had a van went wide in its turn, uh, went into your lane. Now the GoPro or any type of action camera has a wide angle lens. So it's like a concave mirror, just like your mirrors on your bike, where it's concave and objects appear closer than they appear. So, uh, or something like that. So you have this uh, this van right here that is actually relatively close. This is probably, uh, I would say, about three quarters of the distance compared to this. So it's actually probably like right here uh, in real life. You see how close this was? But remember, we have this huge lane right here. So just do a quick evasive maneuver. Just, uh, just move. It's not even evasive. Just slide on over. That way you're not having to deal with this. This happens even if you're in a car. This, this motorist did not mean to do this. It doesn't want to get in an accident. So don't treat them like they're idiots. It's just probably a mistake. He made it through. So now we have another type of intersection. Remember, intersections are extremely dangerous for motorcyclists. So he's doing head checks. He's looking forward, so he's not going to hit anything. And he's also doing head checks, which is very good. This is what I want you guys to do. 
So look forward, head check. Looking forward, head check. Very good. So now we have a motorist right here. Now this, he is taking a look at the motorist instead of looking straight, which is great because you need to check and making sure that the hazards near you aren't going to be hazards that are going to be on you. So when he goes forward, he looks forward now. This is where I tell people to take a quick look at, uh, at car's tires. So take a look at where the car tire is in relation to the line. Okay, the car tire in relation to the line. It's probably like, eh, it's like that far, whatever. I can't really tell with the, the cursor. So when you go and take a look at how far he is to this line, that means that is the indication and cue that he's moving over. There's no reason for this guy to, to jump all the way over across his own lane just to be close to that, that line. This guy's making a decision to move over. At this point, check your mirror, check your blind spot, and scoot on over yourself. That way you can get away from this. I like the fact that he's in lane position one because it, because it gives him this huge space gap. This huge space gap is what's going to really help him out because if he was in lane position three, boom, he would have been hit. So always use multiple lane positions. If there's a vehicle to your right, scoot on over. If there's a vehicle to your left, scoot on over. If there's vehicles on both sides, stay in lane position one. Possibly roll off the throttle so you actually have more of a space cushion, almost like you're riding staggered with cars. That was very good. He rolled off the throttle. <laughs> That was a close call. So that was a close call. So remember, you got a blind turn here. So accelerating to the blind turn is is probably not the best bet. Uh, my my rule of thumb is is to get from point A to point B as safely as possible. At no point do I add as fast as possible. I put as safely as possible. I want to get back to my loved ones, and I don't want to pay for a brand new bike, and I don't want to have to deal with insurance, and I don't want to deal with broken bones or any type of ligaments. Or possible permanent injuries so my goal is just get some from point A to point B as safe as possible and accelerating to a blind turn is not the safest safest bet you really want to take these blind turns nice and easy slow down uh, slow look press and roll is something you learn in the MSF BRC one so slow to the turn look press which is counter steering and rolling on the throttle so right here we, we can actually see around the corner. So at this point, you can accelerate. Perfectly fine to accelerate at this point. But we also see that there's a hazard here. You can definitely tell he's not in the lane because you can see how much space is to this side and how much space is to this side. If there's a massive amount of space to the part where he's supposed to be in that lane and there's barely any space to this guardrail right here, that means he's off to the side. These are subtle cues that you need to start recognizing when you're driving. Because when you're driving or riding, you're going to figure out this is not good. This is not good. There's something out of the ordinary here. And if there's something out of the ordinary and it makes your gut think, oh, no, then the best thing you could possibly do is roll off the throttle. That is probably the safest thing you could do in almost every situation is to roll off the throttle, whether it's a lot or a little. In this situation, I would roll it off just a little, and I would start moving myself to the position number three at a slower speed to allow this guy to get back into his lane. Therefore, he's not in my lane. You see how he's in lane position one at this point? This is a very bad situation. You should definitely be doing any like any type of evasive maneuvers, whether it's just kind of gradually moving over. But like I said, a little bit a couple seconds ago, a couple hundred feet, not hundred feet, a couple dozens of feet ago where he was in, in space time is that move on over. Stay in lane position three at this situation. Yes, there's no shoulder. There's no escape path to the right. But when, since you rolled off the throttle, and, you're, and you've given yourself enough space, it's going to give this guy enough room and enough time to get back in his lane. Remember, these car drivers aren't just riding on the wrong side of the road just so they can hit a motorist. They don't want to die. And if they have a death wish, well, then you got one in a billion chance that that's going to happen. Okay, so really just scoot on over, let this guy get back over, and go on with your day. It's scary, though. Okay, so that happens quite a bit. You're going to have vehicles that want to come out because they cannot see 
you basically you're a single headlight single tire they can't judge your approach speed they can't judge your distance and that's typical with motorcyclists and, and car drivers remember car drivers are used to seeing cars and they can judge how fast the car is going or they can judge how far the car actually is but with motorcyclists it's very difficult it really is for for motorists that have no clue how to ride a motorcycle no clue about anything about motorcycles they do not understand the distance and they do not understand all that stuff. So as a motorcyclist, we need to start presenting ourselves a little better to really uh, uh, change up the dynamic of how we look. So what I like to do when it comes to intersections or anybody that's wanting to peek out is I, I move side to side, side to side real quick. And that's all it does is it's like, oh, okay, so I'm not being blended into the background. I'm being seen because I'm moving around. That's called presentation. Another thing you could do without having to do that is get into modulating headlight. Uh, you really got to check your local laws though because some places, some states, even some countries don't allow a modulating headlight. I know Arizona does and it's actually a great upgrade for you. So you can barely see it's a little choppy because of the way the, the, uh, the camera is, is uh, uh, using resolution. But we have a black vehicle that turned left right in front of that white car that's starting to stick out. Remember, line of sight is very important too. If that black car is blocking the white car's vision of you, they're going to make a decision based on the fact that they don't see anything over there and they're going to go ahead and go. So really, put yourself in a better position over here so you actually have that line of sight and uh, start presenting yourself a little bit better. Doing the rev bomb thing, I never recommend that. I barely even recommend using your horn. Horns and rev bombing do not do anything. Remember, loud pipes do not save lives. And I know a lot of people here are going to be like, well, yeah, they do. It's like, remember, cars are hyper insulated at this point. You know, it's it's they're so insulated that they can't even hear uh, emergency sirens from police officers or fire trucks or ambulances. They're not going to hear it until you're right up on them. So this car driver might have heard a kind of high pitched noise and they're like, what is that? while they're still moving on. That's not what we want to do. We want to have them see us. So instead of rev bombing, yes, it's an auditory clue to, hey, where, what's that noise come from? I'm going to look around. So that might help, but the one thing that's really going to help is actually putting yourself in a better vision and presenting yourself here. So this right here is a hazard. He's in your lane. There's no one coming uh, on oncoming traffic. So if you absolutely have to, start moving over and do an evasive mover to the right if, if he uh, decides to stop. Because he could creep all the way into your lane and boom, you go right over the hood. Um, but luckily this guy stopped. So the, like I said, on a lot of these things, rolling off the throttle, allowing the person to give it a little bit more time to see you might actually help. They might just stay there while you rolled off the throttle, you're a little bit slower. Or you rolled off the throttle, they saw you or didn't see you and decided to go ahead and make the turn. So a lot of the things that you can do in this situation, since you have a lot of space here, is to roll off the throttle and increase your space for the amount of time you have. And if you absolutely have to, you can start applying the brakes and then swerve. Do not brake and swerve, but brake, release the brakes, then swerve. Okay, once again, we have the same motorcyclist uh, almost having, it's, I don't know if it's the same day, but having another close call. If you're having multiple close calls in a day, um, there's something going on and it's not good and, and typically you're the you're the common denominator in this situation so that is one thing that we're really talking about here is how to change our own aspects of riding so that we become safer we can't change other motorists we can't change anything that other people are doing we can only change what we're doing here we have a big bus right here he's moving at a, at a decent rate of speed he's in lane position two so he's right in the center we see a bus starting to rotate and start to move and the only place they can go is into our lane so what we could either do right now at this point is to roll off the throttle, let the bus go, or do what he does, keep accelerating, move over, do rev bombing, which actually when you pull in the clutch and rev bomb, you're removing power to the rear wheel. So now he's just basically coasting next to the bus, which does nothing. It, 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 you do not have any power. You, don't have, you can't roll off the throttle. You can't accelerate because you have your clutch pulled in because it removes power to that rear wheel. But I want you to take a quick look. This is a lesson that we can learn, and this is something that we talk about in the live streams, is that look how much room you really need to do an evasive maneuver. He is barely taking any room from oncoming traffic, and he's riding the line. Remember, this is all we need to use. This is all the space. So start utilizing some of your evasive maneuvers and thinking to yourself, I just need this much space. I don't need a full lane. I don't, I don't need a full emergency lane. I could just use this much space, and this is what he did. 
So remember, that's all you have to do. So start practicing this. And a good way to practice such a small lane is go to a parking lot and do a slow speed practice. And I have a lot of that stuff. I have slow speed, tight turn from a stop, uh, doing this uh, straight line weave, doing U-turns, figure eights, all that on the ddfmcrew.com website. So you might want to check that out so you can start practicing in a parking lot. What the hell is wrong with you? Okay, this is one thing that that I don't do and and I know in Phoenix and in California it's a little crazy and you have to be an aggressive driver in California and, and at least Phoenix and probably other states around the world, New York and all that stuff. Um, but for me, whenever I'm driving in these situations, um, I always let somebody in. Because remember, they have four tires. They have the lug nut rule against the, uh, against us. They have a massive, I mean, imagine if, if this is the vehicle that did that to him. I mean, you're not going to win. So what I do is when it gets to this situation, you can actually see that this guy has a blinker. He's moving from this lane to this lane to this lane. So he's obviously needs to go to this exit. You see the exit sign right here? So when you start recognizing that clue, it's like, well, just let the guy go. Look how much room there is. Look how much room there is. Let the guy go. Roll out the throttle a little bit and accelerate. That's the, one of the beauties of the bike. You know, we have a very powerful machine compared to the weight, and we're riding on it. And why don't we just slow down a little bit and then accelerate a lot? It's, it's fun. We could do that. So indication, indication. He saw it. He saw the indication. He knows exactly what this car wants to do. He has his thumb right here. So he knows that this person's going to, look, at you ha these are the exits. Quite possibly, it's, it's going to be a junction after this, and he wants to get in the exit only. It's a toll bridge and everything. He wants to get in this exit only because it's probably going to be a turn that he has to make. So as a, as a motorist on the road, and this usually happens in commuting, let the person go. If, if, if more people would just let people go, we would be in a better place. So he's had an indication all the way from this other lane, and as soon as he recognized, the motorist cyclist recognizes that he's going to go, so I'm going to go frame by frame right here, he looks down at, see how it looked down right there? He looks down at his controls, so that means that there's going to be a little bit less of experience with this motorcyclist. Uh, usually, you you have a familiarization with your motorcycle that you don't have to look down, you don't have to look at gauges unless you know something really is happening. Um, you don't have to look down for your horn, you don't have to look down for your, your uh, turn signal. If you're having to look down, that means you're still at the more of the beginner stage and you haven't familiarized yourself with your motorcycle. So he looks down and he applies the, the horn right here. The guy's still in his lane. Look how much room this guy has. So instead of applying the horn, how about let's roll off the throttle just a little bit so this guy can get in. There would be zero close call. There would be zero everything in that situation. And with a horn, quite possibly cause a road rage incident. Who knows? Maybe this guy's having a bad day. He, his wife just left him, or left him or he just lost his job or something terrible has happened. We don't want to uh, exacerbate the situation. Again. Look where you're going. Oh, there's more. Ah, I'm on the other Down with the plan. Okay, so we're going to skip some of this stuff because a lot of it's road rage stuff. And this is what I do on my live streams is that we only talk about the actual incident. Um, if there's any road rage after the fact, um, I'm not, I'm not going to encourage that. So right here, uh, we're going to take what's good out of this situation since this is a very uh, stressful situation for any type of motorcyclist. And hopefully no beginners have to deal with this. But if you have to, uh, we're going to go over the fact that rolling off the throttle is what really saved his life on this one. So right here we have... 
we have multiple motorcyclists going around. There's really no traffic control at all. They've got a big, massive vehicle here. So passing a vehicle like this is actually very dangerous. He has his indication right here. So that means he's moving over. So this should be a clue to you to kind of roll off the throttle. But he's rev bombing is not going to help. The only reason why he was able to slow down is because he's applying a little bit of brake pressure. And when you rev bomb, remember, you're pulling in the clutch, removing power to that rear wheel. So it's almost like um, uh, engine braking. It's almost like uh, rolling off the throttle. Engine braking and, and pulling the clutch are, are a little bit different things because you roll off the throttle. The braking will actually happen if you pull in the clutch, you're just coasting. But you see the space he has? He actually rolled off the throttle, and then when the vehicle left, he was able to get around. So we're going to go to the next one. Same situation that he put himself in. See how he accelerated to pass and then he got caught? This right here is impatience, ego. This is what will get you. So scale back, take a deep breath, and don't do it. So since he had ego and he had peer, or not peer pressure, he had ego and then he had uh, impatience on the next portions when he was coming up to the, uh, the motorist and he was yelling at him. That can cause a road rage incident, and this is something that we do not want to have, especially with a giant vehicle here, and having a road rage incident is not a good idea anyways. So a giant vehicle here will definitely just run you off the road, make you crash, and they could just keep going. Nobody's going to care. So let's go ahead and skip this one. I don't care too much, even a thumbs up. I don't care too much about road rage. I don't, I don't encourage it. I'm not going to show it. So let's see what that happened here. So this looks like a parking lot practice session on riding uh, fast. Um, I don't know what these are in the road. This might, uh, I don't think they're cones or anything like that. Um, I think these are just there in the road. This is actually a very dangerous situation. But what he's doing is parking lot practice in the aspect of I'm going to ride fast and take corners. He's not wearing any gear whatsoever, so if there is ever an incident to where he did low side, actually completely low side and, and, and crashed, he's going to have massive injuries to his body. Okay, We're going to have a lot of road rash. It takes a split second of the heat transfer and the friction transfer to your body to start ripping off flesh. So if you're going to be in a parking lot practice situation away from other hazards, remember we're moving hazards by being in the parking lot, but what we're doing is that there still is one other hazard, which is crashing. So how do we mitigate that hazard? By wearing full gear. So he's gonna low, he's gonna almost low side in this situation. He's gonna lose traction to that rear tire. It's gonna catch, and luckily he didn't flip him over and cause a high side. So he was able to handle it very well. That's what happened. And the reason why I say it's more of a parking lot practice because he comes back in and his buddies right here. So they're all taking turns, kind of having fun. Okay, intersection right here. Okay, in this situation, take a quick look. As a motorcyclist, this is probably what uh, affected him a little bit. So we have this vehicle that turned out of this area. This person's waiting. So in a uh, four-way stop, it goes counter, it goes clockwise. So the f the two people that show up, the one that's to the right of you gets to go first. So right here we have this person going. I have no idea why this person's going because the person right of this, which is this person, should have been going next. The whole let's go like this and then let's go like this, that is not how you do a four-way stop, but that's what typically happens, so keep an eye out for it. So this guy goes, the motorcycle is going to go not wearing any gear, so just in case there is a crash, he's not going to be in a good position. Uh, typically what I see is people wearing gloves and a helmet only, and that's not good. Uh, so right here he's taking a look at this guy because this guy probably said go ahead and go, or he's like, well, I'm going to go, so he's telling this motorist don't go, which is against the uh, four-way stop sign etiquette. So we have this guy also going. So maybe this guy thinks that this motorcyclist is going to go straight. So this guy's going to go straight. But he's going to make a right-hand turn. See how he looked? He waved at him. It's like, okay, I'm going to go. So now we have this motorist going. So at this point, slow down. Do not accelerate. Straighten it up just a little bit. Let the guy go. Because if you try to gun it, who knows? Maybe this guy's going to try to gun it. The best bet here is that both people, including you and this guy, is going to be like, oh, crap. And then they're going to slow down and stop. You're like, okay, who should go? That is the best bet when both people when when you slow down. Okay? So if you accelerate, maybe he's going to accelerate. Boom, you guys got in a crash. 
So let's take the, 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 the best possible situation out of this bad situation. Perfect example of how much room you truly need. So this motorist is having to move over because of the bicyclist. So at the end of the day, are we saying, hey, this motorist is the, as the person at fault? If this person didn't move, they would have hit this person. So what they're doing is they're moving over just a little bit. And this is really a small road. Maybe he's going against, you know, maybe this is a one-way road and he's not supposed to be on here. I don't know. It's a tiny road. These look like shoulders. This looks like a single lane. Um, so what I'm trying to see is that, you know, you know, what happened here at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. What can we do? You see how he's on the edge of the lane? See how he's over here already? That's how much room you need. This right here is basically a shoulder on a road. That's all you need to get around a vehicle. Look at that. Perfect. The base of maneuvers. Red light, red light, red light. So we're going to talk about this one. We're going to talk about this one. This one, I mean, we're talking about all of them. So right here, we have this motorist taking a look at the person behind him. I don't know if there was an incident prior to this to where he's causing some type of, uh, not road rage, but he's making an indication to this person, hey, you did something wrong, or hey, what's up, you look cute. I don't know what it is. Here's the thing that I do know. He's not looking ahead. Okay, you travel many, 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 many feet per second, even at 20 miles per hour. So if you're going 40, that's almost, it's actually quadruple the feet per second. So take a look at this. He's looking, looking, looking. Looking, looking, he kind of sees that there's some traffic stopping up ahead. He probably wants to get in this lane. Accelerating around here, we have a red light. The motorist put himself in this close call, and this is not good. So you need to make sure you're actually looking forward. The motorist put himself in this situation, but if for any reason you get in this situation, this is where emergency braking will, will save your life. So progressive emergency braking, so applying the clutch in all the way, applying the, uh, your rear brake and your front brake gradually like you're squeezing an orange. Because if you squeeze an orange, you go bam like that, you're going to have orange juice just splattering everywhere. So nobody does that. So if you have... Uh, thank you, Robert, with this. Uh, I drink a no things glass. So if I have an orange right here, I'm going to slowly squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, so orange juice goes in. That is what you're doing with the front brake. You're slowly squeezing, squeezing until you start feeling that rate, weight transfer to that front tire, and then you can start applying more and more and more brake pressure. So the, you got some room here. Uh, the fact that he accelerated around this vehicle is not a good idea. So it, for evasive maneuvers in this situation, since you're like, oh crap, I'm coming up on this guy, what you can do is actually start applying the brakes right now. There's no reason to get in the other lane. But he accelerates. Right here. Accelerates. Now we have, uh, maybe he put the visor down so the camera doesn't get him. So maybe he made the decision to run the red light anyways. Possibly to get away from that red car that he's causing an incident with. But since he did that, he's going to create himself a, a situation to where now we have cars turning left in front of him. Now, cars turning left in front of you in, in an intersection is one of the most dangerous things for you, but he put himself in this situation. So at the end of the day, are we supposed to yell at this car driver? Are we supposed to yell at anything other than him? Luckily, he was able to brake enough in time to allow the car to move out of the way. And this is what I say about rolling up the throttle. Maybe slowing down your speed will give that car enough time to get out of your way. That will prevent 90% of all situations involving a secondary vehicle on the road. And you see how he rev-bombed the car like he was in the way? He ran a red light. Did he hit the car? Okay, we're going to go back just a little bit. So this right here, very dangerous situation. We're having uh, vehicles on the right that are parked and vehicles moving on the left. So we're doing a lane filtering type situation. The one thing you really got to watch out for the cars on the right is either they're pulling out or they're going to open their door. A lot of people do not look. 
and they're looking at these cars like, oh, we got plenty of room, but they're not noticing that there's motorcycles coming in the way. Right there. This car right here. <clears throat> now, a lot of times when people park their vehicles on an incline, they have their, their um, <clears throat> excuse me, their car tires uh, turned so that if something does happen, like it goes out of gear, the parking brake doesn't work. So you can even see it right here. Um, the, the car will actually hit the curb and kind of stop like a wheel chalk. So we actually have to start watching for this. Remember, once again, like I said in the beginning, you watch for these wheels to see if they start turning. We also see that there's uh, uh, running lights on this vehicle. So there's no running lights on this vehicle. There's running lights on this vehicle. That right there is, is an indication that there's someone in this vehicle and that the engine is on. So this should be a cause for concern and, and, a, and a light bulb should be popping up in your head and your gut should be telling you, oh, there's something going on here. So this guy, there's nobody here. This guy, there's somebody here. There's, there's the indications, the cues that something could happen. You notice how it's a lot like this one. You got the running lights, running lights. He starts to rotate. So let's go back a little bit. I'm going to put it at half speed or quarter speed, actually, real quick. Quarter speed. So we're going to watch this. It's starting to rotate. So instead of looking where you need to go, you need to start using your peripheral vision when it comes to riding, especially when it comes to stuff that are a little bit low to your side. Your cone, the, the visual cone that you have that's constantly moving like this, you have a three degree cone where your eyes actually focus on. So you're constantly doing this. If you've seen any type of eye tracking software for you know uh, video game streamers or anything like that, you see where their little cone is. Same thing with, uh, with uh, uh, pilots. Their eyes are constantly moving, their head's always on a swivel. So use your peripheral to see this part. Line of sight, watch out, watch out. No, 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 no. Okay, so line of sight is a big issue on this one. You can't see around all the other vehicles. Being super close to this vehicle is not a good idea. So here, here, here's what I talk about line of sight. I would move on over to this side. I'd move, oh, my arm's all cut off. <laughs> I'd move over to this side so I can see around the vehicles. So this guy's indicating that he wants to turn left. So why are we rushing to prevent him to do that? We literally put ourselves in that situation by trying to lane filter him. See, there's a, this guy's trying to lane filter. The motorcycle is trying to lane filter. This guy just wants to get in this little spot right here. Maybe he has an exit coming up and he needs to start moving over. So why are we trying to lane filter this? Why don't we just let the guy go and then we don't have to lane filter. We could just go straight in our own lane with plenty of space cushion for everything. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Having an aggressive riding behavior, put yourself in these situations. So do not do that. So he already did that. He's already upset with him. He indicated this guy get bo got back in his lane. He still needs to get over. So he's going to try to get over again. So he's probably going to accelerate just a little bit and get on over. And the, motorcycl <clears throat> the motorcyclist gets in his way again. This is your fault. So nighttime riding brings its own specific hazards. At this point, you're having to use your headlight and then whatever ambient light you have in order for you to see. So your visual distance is, is really diminished. And when I say that, also think of other motorists on the road, their visual distance is also diminished. Now you probably blend in as a motorcyclist with the car behind you and the car's here. So this person was uh, opening up the view so they could see it a little bit further. It just so happens that their hood and their engine and everything sticks out. This is a typical situation here. We have a ton of intersections. They're called T intersections here. Okay, so we got cars coming out. This is where I'm at. I'm riding in this lane. Cars are going to come out into here. Okay, T intersections. When you have T intersections like this, they're just as deadly as cross intersections. Okay, so what you need to do is actually scoot on over, 
get out of this guy's blind spot in the first place. So either roll off the throttle or get in this open area right here and then stay off to the left. So that way you have a space cushion all right here because this is a T-intersection right now. This is considered a T-intersection also. So we have people wanting to come out of the gas station. So this at this point. So immediately he sees it at this point and you hear the honk. That means he, he recognizes. His search and evaluation is very good, but his execution of what he needs to do is not good. His execution for this situation is to move out of lane position two, get over to lane position three, so he can have a better line of sight. Because remember, the car is right here and is looking, is trying to look down this way. So if you're, if you're like way over here, he's not going to see you. If you're way over here, the line of sight is a lot better. Luckily, this vehicle stopped. And the horn probably grabbed his attention, but who knows? Maybe he's not paying attention. Maybe he has headphones in. I see a lot of people driving around having headphones in. And right here, this is all the space we have. If I absolutely had to, I've, I'm always constantly checking my blind spots both left and right. My mirrors both left and right. So I know where I am in a spatial, where, like spatial uh, space and time. I'm just going to start saying space and time. That way, if something like this happens, I can swerve left without even having to look because I looked every five to 10 seconds and I know for a fact that there's no car on my blind spot. So if I absolutely had to, boom, evade to the left, back into my lane so I'm, not, I'm out of other people's hazards. Um, this typically happens, it does. It's a close call, but it happens a lot when you're riding. Oh, whoa, whoa. So right here, what happened is that there was that backup. So hindsight on this situation, it's like there's there's backup. So on these blind turns and wondering why, like on a road where it's continually going, like let's say there's a highway, I don't know, this is in Europe somewhere. Uh, if it's a highway and, and traffic is supposed to continuously keep going, it's not supposed to stop on this highway. If for some reason it stopped, there is a reason for it. Okay, there's either an accident or there's a backup somewhere. So when we see, we see this guy right here, it's like, well, you know what, I'm gonna go to the next area, and there's a massive amount of backup. You don't know what's going on, so at this point, you need to start slowing down, because you need to start making decisions here, because this is your turnoff, supposedly, because this, this guy turned off here. So if this is your turnoff, um, really start slowing down, be very cautious around this, it's almost like a construction zone, where you're kinda cautious, because you don't wanna hit nails, you don't wanna hit screws, and then you don't know what kind of debris, or what kind of cars are gonna do, because everyone's confused. In this situation, move over to the left lane completely, Roll off the throttle just a little bit. Hopefully you don't have any cars behind you. If you do, if you're rolling off the throttle, not applying the brakes, they'll start to, to uh, uh, recognize that you're slowing down. If you want to, apply a little bit of that rear brake so that brake light uh, pops on so that people can see you. What I like to do is just tap the rear brake every once in a while. It's almost like a modulating brake light. It does this when you tap the rear brake just a little bit. And remember, rear brake is only about 30% of the power. And when you're accelerating, it's gonna barely be any power. Because remember, it's just a quick tap. It'll activate the sensor it'll make that rear light pop up. So that's what I do is I roll off the throttle, tap the rear brake just a little bit to kind of indicate to the people behind me that something's happening. And then I'm always under the assumption that people do not like to wait in lines, right? I think everybody understands that. So this guy made a very uh, snap decision instead of stopping completely, then going, he's like, screw it, I'm just gonna go. Perfect invasive maneuver. No reason to use the horn, doesn't matter at this point. Use your evasive maneuvers, con control your primary controls, which is the, the clutch, the front brake, rear brake, and throttle. Okay, In this situation, what you're doing is you're not applying any brake because we're swerving. You're not applying your clutch. Uh, if anything, you're applying just maybe a little bit of gas so you can swerve and maintain your speed. Swerve out of the way, use what you have, get out of there. Perfect. That was perfect. I the more I think the Beautiful more road. I'm gonna I'm gonna replay that one. I don't know if you guys could hear the audio. It was beautiful. I love it. So this guy's motor vlogging. He's in a beautiful area. Wonderful. I want to ride this at some point. But also remember, guys, it's not just car drivers. We just saw a motorcyclist doing something stupid that will cause an accident. So it's human beings. So let's stop blaming cagers. 
Let's stop blaming uh, the old ladies, old people that, that are causing accidents. It's people. Type bikes, but I didn't believe them just because oh, it was a heavy, big bike. However, the more I think about the physics and the science behind it, the more it kind of makes sense, you absolute tit. Perfect. And you see how he he handled that situation. Instead of uh, starting honking, he's he's actually vocalizing it because it, when you vocalize something, that's basically what your brain's saying. Okay, your his brain was saying you absolute shite, and uh, he did something. He did something about it without having to use the horn, without changing anything. Just changed his position. If you notice, he's almost he's like in lane position three here. He still has plenty of shoulder here, plenty of shoulder here. So he has enough room from people that might creep over or anything like that, just like that motorcyclist did. So he rolled off the throttle, applied a little bit of brake here, and moved on over. He still straightened up. He didn't slam that front brake. He gave this motorcyclist enough room. He moved over and continued on with his day. It might have been a quick little pucker factor there, but he's doing really well. Exactly. Tar okay. So we're going to talk about this one, obviously. So what happened here is that he's actually he's actually diagnosing his own uh, close call. So this is, he said this is what happens when you watch your friends and their lines too much. So this was a target fixation problem. Uh, this is also a problem of excuse me is that not riding your own ride. Okay, so pick your own lanes. Whenever I'm out in pub or out on a ride like this and it's a group ride, uh, especially with my buddy Max, he's a more he's a more experienced rider. He actually takes more chances and he's a, he's a very good rider. I, I, for the longest time I wasn't at his level. So what I would do is I'd let him go way ahead. So where I didn't have to see him because I was actually worried. Um, and I just focused on my own ride, enjoyed my own ride. So right here, he says, this is what happens when you, when you watch your friends and their lines too much. So he's trying to keep up with his buddies. See how far back he is. Uh, his buddy's actually going too fast also for this turn. Uh, if you notice that there's gonna be chevrons up ahead. So we got chevrons up ahead. This is an indication that this is going to be a sharp turn. It's also a blind turn. So you really want to open up your view. I personally would be in lane position uh, two because once again, we don't know if traffic's going to come around and creep over your line. But let's also roll off that gas. Let's not give it that much throttle because we still don't know what's going on. And it could be sharper than we expect. So he says, I was scared for my friend and focused on him, so I followed him off the road. This is where you start picking the lines of your buddies, and it that means you're putting yourself in a position where your buddy's the one that's the expert, so I will follow him. So if he messes up, I mess up. But remember, everybody's different levels of experience. Everyone's different levels of, of skill. So maybe his line and his speed is good for him, and it's not, and it's not good for you. It seems in this situation that it's both not good for each other, so he literally followed him off the road. Luckily, there was no other cars coming, but this is a very common thing that happens. And if it starts happening, if it happens to you and you got lucky and there's no cars on the road, start thinking to yourself, okay, I need to start taking these a little bit slower. My skill level, I just rode outside my limit. So I rode outside, yeah, I rode outside of my skill limit. So start taking it back in, okay? Don't ride without, don't ride outside of your limits here. Imagine a car coming. So he's pissed. He's very pissed on that one. Once again, we got we have a, a multi-dimensional 3D plane of existence here. <clears throat> we have a hill, remember a vertical hill. It's a blind vertical hill, and it's also a blind left turn. So it's on a hill and it's a turn. It is everything that we don't want. So in this situation, let's roll off the throttle, slow down just a little bit, just in case there is a hazard that we cannot see on this turn. And it just so happens that this is a hazard of a vehicle coming into his lane. Now remember, once again, we have plenty of space because we're such a small vehicle on the road. Let's use the whole lane if we absolutely have to. And that's what he did. 
You see how he scooted over to lane position one so he can get away? He basically has a full lane, which is actually quite a bit of distance, but it doesn't feel that way. And I understand that, and it's going to give you that pucker factor. If any situation where you go into this and you're feeling like super amped up and anxiety induced and just everything, you're in a panic, just pull over. Pull over, relax a little bit, get back on the road. Because if you continue to ride in this panic state, you're going to be thinking about that panic, and you're not going to be thinking about the motorcycle controls and any type of hazards coming up. You know you're alive when you see a semi-trailer on your side of the road coming at you. Whoa. Oh, he's sliding. He's skidding. Wow. We'll talk about that one. Keeps I keep saying that, but we we talk about all of them. Okay. So this guy decided to pass uh, the Camaro. Okay. And at first I thought the close call was the Camaro was actually moving over. But remember, just because you pass, it's a high-risk situation. Maybe there's something in the road the Camaro had to move out of the way. And just so happens that he doesn't care about you. He cares about his car. So when he, this guy passed, he had to accelerate. And we're on mountain curves here. So this is more of those that ego and like I want to speed and have fun on these mountain curves. I'm, I'm street racing basically. I'm doing a time trial of my own times. You know, I'm used to playing Mario Kart where I go against my own ghosts. I mean, that's what we're doing here, okay? So that's what this guy's doing. So yeah, it's a little bit of a close call. You know, he, he had to move over, but he, we're accelerating. We got massive turns. So we're going way too fast for these turns coming up. He maintained his speed from the passing. So that means he increased his speed from, be, from when he was behind the Camaro to having to pass, but he never did slow down. So what's happening here is that he's applying the brakes because he went into this turn way too fast. I do talk about, like I said, during my live streams and during my videos is that this shade right here and then this sun right here, the where it connects, it really can mess up your line and your visual acuity and everything. So you really got to watch out for that. It's a sharp turn. It's a blind turn. We have this hazard. We also have the hazard of going too fast. We have multiple hazards here that are causing problems for us as, as, a, as a motorcyclist. Slowing down would have been the best thing you could have done. So right now, in the middle of the turn, he's trying to slow down. The only way you can slow down in the middle of a turn like that is either roll off the throttle, which is going to cause a blip, which is going to cause your rear tire to lose traction for a split second, which is not good in a turn because then if you lose traction for just that split second in turn, you're going to have that tire move out from underneath you. So what he's doing here is applying both brakes as hard as he can in the middle of a turn. I mean, when I say hard as he can, I mean hard as he can in this situation. If he applied it 100%, he would have dropped it. So he's applying it as hard as he can in this situation without falling, and he's starting to slide towards the outside. Okay, he's, he either locked up the rear tire or he doesn't have enough traction now to do any type of turning because he's using traction on his tires to decelerate. And this is a close call. So you can barely see it. I know it's the, the YouTube bar is in the way, but you can see how he's applying the brake right here. And the moment he's able to save it is the moment he releases the brakes because now his bike has traction for the turn. So right now he's in the middle of a turn applying prime brakes, and this is the inappropriate way of applying trail braking, which is an advanced technique. So watch down here where my cursor is, where his hand is, and you're going to see that he has the brakes pulled in, not all the way, but he has his brakes pulled in probably about 40%, and then when as soon as he releases that brake pressure and he still maintains his turn, his bike goes where it wants to go. Right there. Released. And he made it. See? The best way to solve that problem is slow look, press, and roll. Slow down before the turn, look where you're supposed to go, press the counter steering, and then roll on the throttle on the way out. Okay? Slowing down prior is the first step for a reason. Pedestrians. Okay. Yep. Now, I don't know if, if I'm the only one here, but I'd never look back at what happened 
I already know what happened. Okay, I already know what happened. And and this is a question for you guys. When you're on the motorcycle, do you do that? And if you do, do you do that when you're driving a car? Like if somebody does that to you and you're driving a car, do you look back while you're driving a car? I just want to know. So we got a green light here. He's going to cross and you see these rails. This is also another hazard. We also have the hazard of it's nighttime. Once again, we talked about low visibility for everybody. But we also have these rails. Remember to go over these rails, these train track or tram rails, as, as quick as possible. Make it a, a movement that you mean, okay? So it, it's best to go over it uh, at 90 degrees, you know, perpendicular to it. It's best to go over it like that. But if you can't, um, really purposely turn that handlebar and go over it like this guy does. See how his handlebars are turned? So we got pedestrians in the way. This is another situation where it's actually hazardous for you because if there's multiple pedestrians, this car needs to go. And for, for all we know is this guy's not paying attention. He could definitely hit you. Okay. So once, I said, once again, I said line of sight here. Can you see that van that wants to pull out? You cannot see the van that wants to pull out. So put yourself in a position because every intersection is a hazard and you want to uh, uh, achieve a 100% safety on each hazard. So you pass an intersection and nothing happened, boom, achievement unlocked. Next intersection is coming up. This is another obstacle I got to tackle. Boom, achievement unlocked. Start treating it like a game. Okay, look for hazards. Look for those, you know, like think of them as chests. You know, I'm, I'm opening the chest, boom, got what I wanted, I'm out of here. Just play, play, treat it as a game. That's one of the beauties of motorcycling is that we have so much fun. So right here we got line of sight problems though. Okay, you can see it. They can't see you. Now this is where I'm saying you have to focus and pay attention is that you should be able to see this hazard right here. That block of black right there, that's the van. This right here is the car blocking the view. Okay, it's blocking the view for the, mo or the, for the van driver, but it's not blocking your view. So now you have almost like telepathic powers where you can see what's happening prior. Now we have a hazard because this guy wants to come out. He's obviously not turning right because if he was turning right, his tires and his, and his uh, lights would start be pointing towards us, right? Because he's turning into it. This looks a lot like he's going to be turning into our lane and making a left-handed turn out of his spot. So in this situation, either roll off the throttle or move over to the right, do an evasive maneuver, which is a very slight evasive maneuver, <clears throat> and uh, accelerate out of that. Do not, <clears throat> do not apply the brakes and swerve. Um, one thing that I like to do is, and this is my concern for other motorists on the road, is that, <clears throat> like I said, I choose to roll off the throttle in a lot of situations because I don't want this motorist to be in his lane. I don't want him to be in his lane. My main concern is the safety of everybody. And if there's a car coming and not paying attention and thinking that this guy is going to make it through and he's still in his lane because he has to stop because you decided to slow down and flip him off or do whatever it is, boom, he gets T-boned. How are you going to live with yourself if there's kids in this van and they died? You're not. Sorry, I was starting to get on a soapbox. Anyways, uh, I'm going to roll the throttle, let him get out of his lane. Or I'm going to swerve out of the way, and I, I want this situation to last as, as, as the least amount of time as possible. Don't look back. Remember, you got obstacles in front of you. So laughing is actually a natural thing for us to kind of dissuade, hey, there was danger, but we're fine. So laughing is a typical response to a scary situation. Um, what happens here is that it's obviously nighttime. I don't know if it's raining or not, but the guy in front uh, loses traction on the turn and actually goes into the next lane. The motorcyclist that has the, the camera does the same thing because he's not riding his own ride. Like I said, there's not much I can tell on this situation. It's way too dark. So he slides a little bit, goes out of his lane. But then why does the motorcyclist behind him does that? It's because he's not riding his own ride. And he has target fixation on his buddy. <laughs> Hazard. Okay, stop sign. Okay. I didn't put that up there. He did. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to this situation. So why is this car just stopped? 
mechanical failure or making a decision to turn left. It's going to turn left. So in this situation, it's very dangerous because remember, cars turning left in front of us. This, this vehicle might not see you or the vehicle sees you but can't judge your speed and where you are in space time. So he might just go thinking he can make it. Um, so in this situation, roll off the throttle, relax a little bit, don't do anything crazy. Um, and until you know for a fact that he sees you, he's not moving, you don't see the tires rotate, then go ahead and go. It sounds a lot like he did that. It sounds like a, uh, a deceleration, possibly even shifting down, so he did a good job. We also have another intersection right here, okay? So if we have, for this car driver that's wanting to pull out, which is going to cause the next incident for this guy, <clears throat> let's take a look at line of sight. The car driver only sees this car, that one that wants to pull out. The van and this car is blocking his line of sight of you. So this is why it's so important for us to make sure that we see and do and control our own environment when it comes to every intersection, every corner, every single hazard we have. We cannot expect other drivers to pay attention or do what they're supposed to do. Still line of sight's blocking. Line of sight's blocking. You see him starting to rotate, so I'm going to scroll it back just a little bit. I want you to see this vehicle, the car that uh, is at the stop sign. It starts to move. That is your indication. A moving object is starting to move, or I mean, a car is starting to move. It's a moving object. Uh, in nature, camouflage only works if you're staying still or moving very slowly, right? So if you have an object that's just running, like a deer just running or anything that's running, you can see it. You can definitely see it. So that's how we need to start acting. These are hazards. These are predators out there. This car decided to move. It's like... In that situation, instead of amping yourself up, so what he... Yeah, okay. So what he did was honk. That's perfectly fine in that situation. Hey, take, next time take a look at me. Perfectly fine. But really watch out for yourself because who knows? Maybe the, the truck or this... Yeah, this truck right here decided to go too. You see how far past that sign he is? Who knows? Maybe he decided to go. So your concern now is, yeah, I, I missed this car, but what happens if the truck goes? So now you have to be like, boom, pass this one, achievement unlocked, there's another hazard right here, make sure I can get past that. So horn is typically not the thing I like to do. I like to use my eyes and my body to control my bike where it wants to go, and my eyes and brain tell me that there's so many hazards on the road, I'm evading every single one of them. It's a game, it's fun, I enjoy it. So when you guys say, hey, you know, all these, I'm going to take it off that. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, I didn't want that staying up there. So uh, treat it like it's a game, relax. And like I said, a lot of you guys say, well, man, it's, it's so stressful to constantly be searching for hazards. But remember, just like how you started riding a motorcycle, it was tough, 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 so much stuff to remember. And now that as you progress and practice, 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 it's like it's not a big deal. So if you consistently practice, practice, practice uh, hazard perception, you're going to make it second nature to you. And it's going to be a lot of fun now. Let's actually pass all this stuff. I don't really care too much about it. Oh. Holy. 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 Yeah, so that was a, a little bit of uh, uh, tanks. Not even, it's not any tank slapper. He lost traction for a quick second there. So you see this crack? See this crack right here? That right there is a groove, and, and you can easily, if you find a tar snake and you ride along the tar snake in a controlled environment, you'll start feeling your bike move a little bit. Okay, that is your tire trying to grab traction from one edge to the other edge, other edge, other edge. This right here is also a lot like a train track or a monorail or anything like that inside of a city where it's going along the line. Okay, I talked about that in my ride along with Dana and uh, the fireman number one, episode one, where I ride in town, there's a monorail and it can really affect you on this aspect. So when he's in the middle of a turn, his tire is actually touching that, the two edges and it's wanting to, you know, grab each one. So that's what's causing him to move around a little bit. So this is something that you really got to watch out for. And at night, we, once again, we have a problem with low visibility. So this is where outrunning your headlights is not a good idea. Uh, I like the fact that he's using his uh, high beams. So guys, at night, use your high beams. Our high beams are are still not as powerful as a lot of car drive or a lot of cars low beams. So give yourself the best visibility possible. Maybe upgrade your lights to where 
you don't need to have a high beam. Your low beam is really good. So maybe look into that so that way you're not outrunning your light. So watch him hit it. Boom, right there. Holy Holy, holy sh guys. We're gonna see that. So we're gonna skip the rest of that. So there's a little bit of music. And I don't yeah, this video is gonna be copyright claimed anyways. Um so here we go. Intersection. Intersection. Stop, 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 stop. Very good. Did a good job. Okay. So he did a good job when it came to maintaining his speed and evading um, the incident. But once again, uh, he's being impatient, doesn't want to slow down for a vehicle like that. So he already shook his head and he's making a decision. You know what? I'm going to go around this person. He's probably looking up here. There's nobody coming. I'm assuming this vehicle is supposed to yield also, but he's accelerating to swerve out of the way. Another thing that you can possibly do is roll off the throttle because when you start passing vehicles, especially when you're in the opposite direction of other vehicles, like this is the oncoming traffic, you're taking a high risk here. Okay, so the lowest risk uh, that you could possibly take in this situation is to roll off the throttle, just let the guy go. If you're in a rush, you're gonna start creating a more high risk situation for, for yourself. So really relax. Take a breath, roll off the throttle, and stay behind the vehicle. Pass when it's uh, perfectly safe. Because when you start making rash decisions, your your educated guess of where traffic is coming is not going to be the best. Right here. You almost made me poop a little woman. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. That's the best way to say it. All right, so we have a green light for us. We got this truck here. Remember, intersections, 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 intersections. Always be aware. The fact that they, they decided not to stop, you see how they accelerated through. They made a decision right here. He did exactly what is needed. There's nothing for me to say. He rolled up the throttle, applied a little bit of horn when he knew it was safe. And then he just said that he almost pooped. Whoa. You almost made me poop a little woman. You wondering what he's doing? Really wondering what he's doing here? Why he decided to, to turn left randomly, a giant bus? Take a quick look. The bus lane. I don't know if he's supposed to go to this one, but that's why he's doing it. At the time, you're not gonna know why, but take a look at your own footage and realize, oh. Because remember, you put yourself in a high risk situation by, by lane filtering around all these vehicles. So that is the risk that you take when you do this. Slow down, slow down. Okay. The reason why I said slow down then because he's maintaining speed on a, a sharp turn. Um, this typically happens. Now the way the where the way the where he went was it was an on ramp. So more than likely this guy wants to go on an on ramp. So this is where knowing your uh, location and where you are, kind of being like a spatial awareness, trying to predict people, it's very important. So right here we got this guy applying the brakes in a green light. Why? Why is he applying the brakes in a green light? Is there a hazard in front of him or is he making a decision? Exactly. He's making a decision and his decision is either, is either to go left, right, stop, whatever it is. And that sh this should be a clue to you that there could possibly be this guy being a hazard. 
and that's what happened. So when a guy decides, or when a vehicle decides to apply the brakes in a green light, that should give you an indication that something's about to happen. He did good. There's not much you could do in that situation. Rolling off the throttle might not have been the best thing because um, the guy was also applying the brakes. So if you apply, release the throttle or roll off the throttle, you'd probably be playing, uh, next to him, right parallel right next to him. So in that situation, you have to make a judgment call whether to roll throttle, swerve, or accelerate through. Accelerate through, but uh, give yourself a little bit more space so you can accelerate and kind of slide over to the other lane position. That might have been the better bet, but he did make it through here. Thankfully, the car driver noticed and went back into his own lane. And the reason why I said slow down is because he accelerated out of a hazard, but now we're going into the next hazard, which is a sharp turn, and it's a blind turn, and it's dark. You don't know what's on the road. So when I was saying slow down, slow down, slow down, is because once you pass that hazard and you did all your evasive maneuvering, you accelerated, you braked, you did this, you did this, you did this, now it's time to calm down. Boom, we got to go to the next one. We're back on the ride. That thing is over. We're out of that situation. Great, we're on the next one. And this is right right here where I'm talking about slow down now to slow look, press and roll through this turn. Car turning left. Car turning left, he sees the hazard. He never slows down. Um, I would roll up throttle just a little bit. But he did a very good evasive maneuver to the right. You'll see how the bike just kind of rotates a little bit. That was a good evasive maneuver. Right there. That's all it took. But if you notice, um, by the time he got close to the vehicle, it was already almost out of his lane. He has all this room. This guy is also a big problem. But he did a good job. I like that. All right, I think that's the end of the videos right there. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you to all my patrons and all my YouTube members because if it wasn't for you, um, I wouldn't be able to do a video like this. I did a long video like this. Robert, thank you so much for sending this video to me. Dark Horse 116, my DDFM legend over here. Um, thank you so much for, for sending me this because uh, I think this is a good learning opportunity for everybody, especially for those that don't watch my live streams. This is what I do in my live streams. If you want to know what it looks like on my live streams, this is what it looks like on my live streams, okay? Usually the chat is over on the right. It's disabled right now because I'm doing this and I usually don't have the green screen. But this is exactly what we do on my live streams. And I, here we go. So if you are the top super, or if you're the top donator or super chatter of the month, Katrina, thank you so much. Super chat. My latest one was AA Ron Culbertson. My latest YouTube member was Matthew Leroy. And then if you look at Dark Horse 116 right there, um, those are my uh, veteran crew members and above on Patreon. And then where it says sponsor me, this is probably going to be, you know, if it's after September and you're watching this, uh, that is for the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. I'm actually raising money for the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride for men's mental health and prostate cancer research. So far at the point of this video, I've raised $3,003 out of $10,000. So thank you guys. Every, just thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody that has been supportive. Hopefully you like this video. It's a long form video. I'm not going to edit it. I might add some few things here and there, but that's, ab that's absolutely it. This is what I do on my live stream. So if you want to see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button, and I'll be here to chat with you while we're doing these live streams, answer your questions, and I, I love it when you guys participate. All right, with that said, hope you ride safe, be safe, and I'll be seeing you around.